Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Uh, I'm Zach Lim from Malaysia. All right. I'm specialized in building a super flat concrete floors. I'm the past president of American Concrete Institute, Malaysian chapter. All right. Uh, it's an honor for me to be invited by uh, CIDC and Dr. Surendra right, to have a small talk on this online international conference on reviving construction industry for post-COVID world. So uh, I'm going to present to you uh, the roles of high performance concrete for concrete floors. Right. As you know, the COVID-19 pandemic right, has caused serious problems throughout the world. And these are some of the shortcomings. Right. The first is, you know, projects are delayed, right? Because of postponed or cancelled. Right. And as a result, uh, people have to incur a lot of extra expenses, you know, to finish off the project. But some companies suffered tremendously and uh, they don't even have the money to complete the jobs or as a result, they fail to fulfill their contract. Subsequently, because of the financial constraint, some of them uh, you know, were even uh, have to face all the uh, legal suits and implications. So, shouldn't the construction industry find solutions to solve their problems like what uh, CIDC is organizing? But how? All right. I have only a small solution. That is, every one of us, of builders, must think beyond the standard construction operation and practices. Right, has going to list some of it. So, the first thing is we have to use special concrete. All right, the first one is ultra high performance concrete. The second one is self compacting concrete. The third is high early strength concrete, and the fourth is fiber reinforced concrete. And finally, is if you are using the best concrete, you need best construction practices. If not, you know, you will end up back to square one. So with ultra high performance concrete, it would definitely help you to increase the productivity. All right. I'll explain all this uh, as we go along. The second thing is using, sorry, uh, self compacting concrete it will certainly help to reduce or uh, the cost reduction in operation right? and of course followed by labor force and thirdly using high early strength concrete all right it will help you to speed up and have a lot of cost saving in your construction and the fiber reinforced concrete would actually is a kind of a, a new innovation to this part of the world but Fibers has been in use for the past, I don't know, probably 30 years or more, right? And lastly, as I mentioned, best construction practices is very, very uh, important, right? So the, to shorten the construction period by doing it right the first time is very important. As you know that when you deal with concrete, you don't want to come back and do any repairs or rework, all right? And uh, it's very, very costly and it's time consuming. All right. And you can never get it right like the original. OK, so I propose the above type of high performance concrete to replace uh, the standard concrete. And I'll start to explain uh, one by one. As you know that high performance concrete, all right, uh, first you have very high compression strength, all right. Uh, easily 100 to 150 or more, all right. And the latest I heard, uh, they can even have up to 800 MPa using ultra high performance concrete. All right. Of course, the second thing is it comes with very high uh, fractural strength, all right. And with high fractural strength, normally you can even help you to reduce thickness of concrete and all that. All right. 
So this is sorry, this is a video to show that you know uh, this is a very uh, uh, high floor uh, concrete. As you can see, this mortar is it's not a self compacting, but it's just a high floor. All right. So with this, you can actually reduce uh, the cost compared to uh, self compacting concrete. All right. So how can we increase productivity? All right. As I mentioned earlier, either you use a high performance concrete or ultra performance uh, concrete. So with high performance concrete, all right. Okay. So let's go back to the conventional uh, concrete topic. As you know, in the market, normally you have to top up like 50 to 75 mm thick onto your uh, existing uh, sub structures. All right. So if you use a uh, high performance concrete, probably you can bring it down to as thin as 20 mm. All right. And if you use high, ultra high performance concrete, you can bring it down to as thin as 8 mm. All right. And of course, you need some fibers uh, to be added. Okay. Then the second thing, of course, it will help you to increase your production rate. All right. For example, you can see that three to five times easily. That means if normally you can do a 200 meter square, you know, with this special concrete, you can even use up to do up to 1000 meter square per day. Why? Because the mixing is, is, is the thinner the coverage is, a bigger area and all that. So it will certainly help you to speed up the work. Right. The second thing is cost reduction in operation and to reduce labor. So the best is to use self compacting concrete. As you know very well, these are the following advantages. The first thing is consistency. You know very well that you don't have to worry once the, 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 the design mix is done, you just place your concrete, just pump it in and that's it, all right, you know, and just tamp the surface and it's so easy and no hassle. Of course, the second thing is you get very high durability because for self-compacting concrete, you always use a very low uh, water cement ratio. As you know that the plasticizers that you use are all the uh, uh, polycarbonate uh, eaters. All right. And the third thing is you reduce your labor force as much as, you know, two thirds. All right. So generally, let's say if you need about 10 workers to place and uh, vibrate your concrete with SCC, you can reduce them to probably three or four uh, laborers. All right. And last thing is shorten your construction time, isn't it? Imagine you're doing a basement slab, all right, a one meter thick, all right. What you're going to do is just continue pumping the concrete and fill up and nothing is done. You don't have to vibrate it. You don't have to do anything. So that's why it helps to speed up the construction time. And uh, finally, uh, you know, you don't need any form of vibration. So you don't have to worry about machines break down, all right. And most important, it eliminates noise pollution, isn't it? So no noise and all that. Oh, and you don't have to worry about under vibration or over vibration. As you know, if you under vibrate, the concrete is not dense enough. It's not then becomes not permeable. It becomes uh, permeable to water. And if you over vibrate, you might have segregation, which causes all the honeycombs and all that. So these are the advantages using self-compacting concrete even though it might cost like another 20 percent or so more expensive but the net you get a lot of savings all right then let's look at the speedy construction method if you are doing multi-story buildings first do you know that you can actually eliminate the cement and sanskrit for every floor because olden days, we always, after we finish the multi-story, all the floors, we have to come back and do a cement sand uh, rendering, right? The reason is because when you, if you don't do the cement sand screen, the floor or the concrete that's been placed is undulating. So you need to come back and do generally a 50 mm cement sand screen, all right, to build the flatness and all that. So if during construction right while placing a structural concrete slab if you can control the flatness and level of the floor 
all right you can eliminate the cement sand screen all right and if you do it so well you can read it's ready for you to receive your towels or even vinyl towels by just putting a thin layer of underlayment all right so with that you save the hassles of bringing up the sand the cement the water you know and the craning cost and all that so end of the day it can save you a lot of money where we have done a few projects uh, lately in Kuala Lumpur all right and of course the other thing is if you use high early strength is that you can actually uh, uh, sorry save on your form work isn't it as you know that if you do a multi-story building you might probably need like three sets of form work or even four okay, to speed up the work so with high early strength you can remove your form work after 24 hours and reuse it compared to your con standard concrete where you need like about a week so these are the the reason right why uh, the uh, high early strength helps so similarly for precast uh, structures right those days you have to wait for three days at least or so before you demove right but today right even as early as 16 hours you can demole and then you can cast another set of uh, structures again so with a speedy construction method you know it's it's very very uh, helpful all right to speed up and hand over your job early right and the fourth thing is introduce innovative uh, building materials right so as you can see here the fibers right you either you can have it in steel fibers or in uh, synthetic uh, fibers right and advantages are as you can see that first thing is it's a better crack control it's three-dimensional because when you add in uh, these fibers into the concrete right, and when you place it it's all over the concrete all right unlike the conventional uh, reinforcement where you must place the position right in order to meet the specification especially on the concrete cover all right so because it's three-dimensional so it's definitely a better crack control compared to reinforcement as you know that reinforcement is basically there to minimize the crack right or controls the, the, the cracks there. and the other thing is they are much much cheaper if you are doing a two-layer reinforcement right if it's a single layer probably using uh, fibers are a little bit more expensive but if it's for sure for two layer is much much economical right and for big projects it can have very substantial uh, savings then the third thing is you save labor you don't need people to cut the bars to tie them you know and uh, to place them using uh, bar chairs or spacer blocks and all that and even bar chairs spacer block all this cost money so as a result there's a lot of saving and when it comes to the concrete all right you just use a, a standard normal uh, concrete mix don't have to buy a pump mix all right because pump mix would cost an additional like two three uh, usd okay and finally you save rental of uh, pump concrete pumps or cranes all right to haul in your concrete and all that so as a result these are the major uh, savings all right if you use uh, fibers okay and especially crack control compared to uh, a mesh right because to place the mesh to control or sorry to minimize crack is very very difficult so with this you don't have a problem all right and the last thing why I say best practices is very very important is because all these are proven uh, past experience where you know that if you follow all these the right uh, standard operating procedures right you would never go wrong isn't it so let me explain some of the examples as follow right to follow sop for example all right this number one right workers always love to add water into the ready mix truck when you arrive 
so that it's easy for them to place the concrete you know uh, they just don't have to uh, pull the concrete as hard when it's, they are dry you know on the, compared to a harsh concrete so adding water you know is the biggest uh, culprit and the result is you get a very weak concrete and then the concrete surface will have a lot of concrete bleeding and it, that would result in the fluorescence and the worst is shrinkage crack for sure after a few months you will see that a lot of crack starts to appear on the surface right and this shrinkage crack as you know is if it's caused by excessive water it will happen many months down the road so and with this crack right starts to appear just before you hand over and then you will end the repair and if you're not careful or if you don't know how to repair the repair will always be worse than the original right so repairing concrete crack is an art it's, it's not easy right and uh, the second example is you see uh, to avoid costly repair what i mean is if during construction all right you do not do not do your surface preparation well right? i mean if let's say your surface is not uh, well roughened not well cleaned up all right even probably their oil and grease there okay and the second thing is your bonding agent all right if you don't use a proper bonding agent or you don't understand a, to use a, a bonding agent right that bonding agent will become a debonding agent as you know very well when it dries up you have to put another coat of uh, bonding agent unless there are some specific bonding agent where you must let it dry right before you put your uh, concrete on top of it so imagine if this fail all right and you can see you have to hack everything out and you could redo it and it costs you a lot of money and especially doing thin concrete topping is very very difficult if you don't understand it most of the time it will end up with a lot of de delaminations so this, this is the reason why you make sure that you follow all the good construction practices and another example is to avoid unnecessary repair right this is again due to understanding of, of vibration right you see a lot of uh, flaws that we come across especially when the workers need to vibrate the, the concrete right they would tend to vibrate away from the edge of the formwork the reason is because if you look at this vibrator if they, they place it so close to the edge of the uh, formwork right and they are worried that this formwork might give way or you know it might it might buckle so as a result they will vibrate far far away from the edge like probably you know uh, 300 to 600 mm away all right but you know what's the consequences all right you see that after a months when you open up the traffic you see that the edge will start to spall and start to crack right the reason is because these areas are not well vibrated you know these are small little things but if you don't follow your best practices and you know very well that it's not easy to repair this all right if this is a, a, a road is a busy road a concrete road all right you have to close it a lot of interruption to traffic and all that yeah. and not only that you have to use some very again fast setting concrete for repair and fast setting concrete are always very very expensive it can be as much as 10 times and all that okay and another thing is placing uh, the uh, position of the reinforcement as you can see that you know this reinforcement is actually just sitting on top of the soil or the earth all right and to me this is of no use you might as well save the reinforcement all right as you know very well reinforcement is basically there to minimize crack all right so if there's any crack is basically there to hold the crack tight 
So this is a sketch to show, right? All right. If this is your concrete, right? If the reinforcement is right at the bottom, as you can see in this picture on the left, okay. So crack would always start to propagate and stops where the, re the reinforcement is. As we have done a lot of uh, a call on the crack floors, we always see that the crack stops at where the reinforcement is. All right. So as you can see, similarly in this case, right? So. That's why I say you can actually save this uh, reinforcement. So by right, the reinforcement should be positioned like 25 mm to maybe max 50 mm down, right? Depending on the the, the, the slab thickness and the type of uh, structures that you are using and all that. So these are small little things, but very very important, right? Uh, okay. Another one is on contraction joints, all right? So as you know very well, contractors, if don't understand on contraction joints, when they finish up a big floor slab, they would, when do they cut the floor? For me, even before I was a floor specialist, I would do it as and when I'm free. It could be a week, it could be two weeks down the road, all right? And we always say, hey, there's nothing wrong with the floor. I don't see any cracks. But like I say, shrinkage crack will always happen a few months down the road, all right? Unless it's thermal crack, it will crack within the next three days or so right and so you must understand first thing when to cut right? for me i always say you must cut the floor slab like eight to twelve hours after you place or you finish them all right and uh, the reason is because if you cut too late all right especially on the external all right due to the sun and the you will see that a lot of micro cracks would actually develop which you can't see with your naked eye so when you cut too late sometimes you do see actually after you have the saw cut done you will see another crack by the side of it all right and this crack is caused by either you cut too late or your saw cut depth is insufficient these are the two uh, main reasons so like i say it's when to cut you can cut it you know the earlier the possible as long when your saw blade goes down it doesn't uh, rip off the edges you know you can proceed right so the timing is as soon as possible right uh, definitely within 24 hours if you can then the second thing is how deep to cut right the rule of thumb is that you cut 25 percent of the slab thickness for normal concrete if it's a, a fiber reinforced you probably cut like one third of the slab thickness okay so in other words let's say you have a slab of uh, a 200 mm thick you have to cut 25 uh, percent which is 50 mm uh, deep all right and this is very important and people do say that why not we cut all the way down all right all the way through uh, you can't do it for two reasons. One is you might have actually a double bus, right? Uh, where you want to do saw cut for especially heavy traffic and all that. And uh, you don't want to cut your double bar. And the other thing is that it's also very costly, right? To cut all the way down. And third thing, if it's very thick slabs, like 400 thick, you know, you might not have the plate to, to cut and all that. So enough is just 25% of the slab thickness. Right, and the final thing is the saw cut interval. What is the spacing? All right, so let's say if you've done the first cut here, where should be the second cut? All right, based on our experience, uh, for external, you shouldn't do anything more than five meter. All right, if you cut up to let's say 10 meter, you might have a, a crack, all right, a natural crack in between your two saw cut for internal. I would say maybe six meter max up to eight meter right and I say all these uh, interval or the spacing between uh, saw cut will have to be subjected to your grade of concrete your reinforcement right and uh, even the weather right whether it's internal or it's like external okay and that's all I got to say. So to conclude, all right, as I say, as a result of the pandemic, it has imposed great challenges to each and every one of us 
but been able to gather all the ex concrete experts from all over the world. Together, we shall revive the construction industry. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there's any questions and answer, please do write to me. Thank you. All right. And have a good day, everybody.